it's the uh, first day of September and I forgot uh, that you guys were on <laughs> uh, so that's where we are right now just fix you up uh. Anyway, I was listening to uh, Lionel again last night. Uh, I, was watching, I listen to the guy every, just about every day. It's good to keep up. Uh, <laughs> he provides you with... Uh, a, a person like Lionel provides you with a lot of the information that's going on throughout the day. And so, uh, all you do is check out the sources. What you do get from Lionel is the interpretation of the events that are going on. So, uh, he's kind of like a summary, like the uh, comics uh, monologue, which in many, many cases are topical. And he provides you with information that maybe you might not get other 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 places. And this is this is certainly true for Lionel that he provides provides uh, an insight that uh, others really don't do. Uh, you can go to the sites that parrot, but the sites that parrot really you don't really get anything from them because they're simply repeating the information. They're the echo chamber, as he says. And the thing is, is again, at certain points in time, he listens to uh, what's going on in the echo chamber. He doesn't realize that in many cases he is in the echo chamber. This is what causes he talked about the confusion. Is you know uh, he doesn't know who to believe. That's because. To some degree, you're always inside the matrix when you're looking at these things. It's not until you actually truly get outside the matrix, and he's not outside the matrix yet. Uh, he's been red pill, but he's not been red pill to the point where he's outside the matrix. And this is what happens with most of these people who have been red pill. They're and even this, this is even true for the other side, what we call the woke. Just because you're woke doesn't necessarily mean you're out of the nightmare, <laughs> or that you're actually awake. They simply woke into another dream. Uh, and I think people have sort of experienced that before, where you, you've woken up and only to realize you realize you haven't woken up and you're still pretty much within a dream. And in this case here, you, you, you only respond to the experiences that you know, the experiences that you have. And then this is a large chunk of gnosis, what some of these, these, these meditation exercises. Well, what they're for is they're to get you outside of the matrix. And they, un they understand that it's a path, it's a journey. It, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't occur right away. So there are exercises that basically help you, in many ways, free your mind. And the biggest point, the biggest struggle, I would say, is that, one, is that of selflessness. You have to basically turn down your own ego. And the thing is, this is a very daunting task because everyone typically in society, I mean, what do you think self-esteem is all about? Self-esteem is, is, is an ego massage. It's a, and I should be using the correct term, not ego, but ego. It's the Greek word ego, I. I is, the, is in Greek, is ego. This is where you get the term ego from, it's just a different pronunciation. along pretty well so there's no real need to you know always have it floored and it's one of the more difficult things to do is to get outside of the eye outside of the ego because we always want to see ourselves in some degree and fashion of specialness but you can't do that when you're always focused on yourself And so this is what happens. The, and if you look at most of the sort of called the echo chamber, how does the person get trapped in an echo chamber? Well, you're you're given something you want, given something you desire, and at, well, more, that's more true to the point because desire is a stronger want than 
than simply being wanted. Uh, so when you have this desire, you have the, the need to sort of uh, express yourself in that manner. And we all want a position that, that massages the ego, the ego. Massages the self. I mean, no one wants to be a loser in society. It takes a while to sort of pull yourself out. And as you do this, then you look then you can look up and out and see around you to see the various different things that are going on. But even then, when you start, when you first get out and you pick yourself up and you look around, you have no idea what direction you're going to go in. Because you are indeed seeing more, but now you have more choices. So which direction is it? What are the options that are you that are, are you going to follow or, or, or going to use in terms of uh, what you know and what you experience? And this isn't always an easy answer. And this is what happens is that you understand this through Gnosis because Gnosis has that big point of these meditations. And there's more than one type of meditation. But the whole point of these meditations initially is to pull yourself outside of the matrix. So without the meditation, this includes fasting, uh, you don't go anywhere. <laughs> you stay stuck within yourself. The only time that you do end up moving, but this is not through your own sense of self, but rather is when you have an existential crisis, like the election of Donald Trump. Well, that caused an, as a, an existential, an existential uh, crisis for a lot of people. A lot of people were really under that. And of course, the uh, the election of uh, Biden did the same thing. It went, went in the opposite direction. And so the feelings that are surrounding this, they still haven't gone away yet. They're still, And the thing is that we really can't determine in one direction or another the way, the way things are going or going to go. We have an idea, we have a thoughts on this, we have feelings on this, but they're not solid enough to really sort of to say that one, in one way or another that something is and something isn't in terms of what the future is going to be. Get off the bumps here. We've got a car in front of us. Uh. But the thing is, people see noses around a lot, they don't even recognize it. So when you're talking about Roman Catholic Church, you're talking about uh, Gnosis again. When you're talking about the Protestants, and uh, including the, uh, the Mormons, you're talking about Gnosis again. When you're talking about Buddhism, or, or, or Yoga, or Hinduism, you're all talking about Gnosis. But the thing is, is that the Gnosis that they did denote is the one of separation of God from, from man. So that man is mortal, he is going to die, he is temporary. Only God is truly And there's a separation between those who are immortal and those who are mortal. Uh, in the Eastern Christian understanding, and even though Eastern Christian is part of Moses, his distinction is, is that we become one with we become one with God. Again, this is something that's to be attained. You, you attain to the, uh, you strive as, as a goal. 
the definition of attaining to become one with God. It doesn't happen immediately. So the things you do in church are the things to get close, to unify. Celebrating uh, mid autumn, we have the mid autumn. Uh, and the temperatures somewhat are starting to normalize, although with a new pattern. There's a new pattern sort of popped up that I'm taking a look at, and then we'll do another observation tonight. I am not going up north the way I had uh, thought I was, but uh, it's neither here nor there. The work goes on, the work continues. Now it's back to our discussion that we have. And it's one where we're sitting back and forth between Gnosis, figuring out how the, how the Gnostics come into our world on a regular basis. And I think Lennon LeBron, LeBron acts as a type he acts as the comparison to uh, what we see of him. And into, if we want to understand the characters in history, what their personalities are, what they felt, how they thought. And so forth, he provides a type, an intellectual type that is conflict with himself. Now this does not have to, the, the himself does not have to be gender specific because we're talking about all intellectuals and there were certainly female intellectuals as well. Uh, they're the ones who produce the uh, academic salon and all the conversations that now, now, now go on were initiated by women, uh, not by men. And uh, this was seen primarily in the Victorian era, but presented itself well into succeeding eras uh, by a number of different people. Oh, I hate this. Some people moving too slowly, other people move too quickly. So just as one side clears, the other side fills up. Too much now, but again, they're slowing down. One guy in the left lane just going leisurely slow. Another guy in the pickup truck going very quickly. And we all have on enough. It does take a while to get through things. Uh, get into our sort of senses and so on and so forth. I gotta fix the mirror. It's down too low. is 
this, I'm reading through some of the uh, materials actually put out by the, I'll call it the Deep State. And what they basically are, if you read the notes from Davos and so on and so forth, that these are, they call them scenarios. And scenarios is what we see in uh, live action roleplay or LARPs. So why did they get the stuff so wrong? And it's probably primarily because, well, they do the scenario, they only imagine the macrocosm, the things that they know. And these people grew up only looking at the macrocosm, macrocosm as something significant. They fail to understand how the microcosm comes into play and sort of brings in what's called the dynamic situation. So they look at a static situation and say, oh, it's going to stay static. It's not going to be changing. Any, to any degree of, of significance. But that's actually an incorrect assumption because there are microcosmic uh, understandings or, 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 or reality that will shift, cause a shift in the macrocosm. This is sort of the same, the same thing with the CBD. Is that we'll, we'll see it's, it's talking to people, right? And, oh, yeah, 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 they were in that nursing home together. And they all had COVID and they passed it around to each other. Well, not necessarily. Because if that were the case, was in the case of a closed environment, you would say that the environment is closed, but the fundamental fundamental remains is that the environment is not closed. They continuously bring in air from the outside. Now, if the air outside is infected with COVID, because it's seasonal, then the air inside is going to become infected as well. The infection will remain continuous through inside and out. Or say outside to inside. And this is where you start seeing the COVID cases start to rise. When the weather shifts and the seasonal the season comes into sinus infections. This is where you start seeing your peaks. This is what the waves are. The waves are the seas from changing. So this is not contact to contact. It's a contact to contact infection. It would be continuous throughout. It, 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 it wouldn't have a season. Because it's continuously in contact. But the reality is if, 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 you, only look at, if, you, only look, if you look at the seasons, you see this is not the case. But what the, here's how they how they adjust their data. They say, oh well, yes, that's because the masking and gowning and the and, and, and the vaccines will work. And then, then it comes back the next day. Oh, there's a new variant. And so they start to cycle all over. They repeat the same thing they did before because they had taken the assumption that it worked. Where it really hadn't worked. Then it was just a, their assumption and they were ignoring the reality that this is something coming along seasonally that it's in the environment. And so they continue doing the same thing that they did before. And of course, you know, repeat these memes and tropes, these sort of slogans that, oh, we're protecting one another, you need to do this in order to protect people, and, you know, if you don't do this, you, you don't care about society. But the reality is, if you go back in the notes, you go back into uh, Dostoevsky's work, you begin to realize the people who don't care are the humanists themselves. And we're at the point in time where you ask the question, well, why all this? And this is you go back into the book, Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment, and see that for the humanists, and you can, you can actually go back and verify this with the humanist rock like Voltaire, that there's a point in time in humanism where the ultimate act of humanism is to be randomly destructive. And at the point of random destruction, they turn around and destroy themselves. Suicide is the ultimate act of the humanist. So if you take the character and you sort of ignore the symbology, don't read the book as symbolic as, as symbolic of anything, but read the, the experiences of the character, 
to the people around the character. You begin to realize that the character is the personalization of the whole entire humanist society. In other words, humanist society reflects the behavior of the character, and the character uh, has the behavior and characteristics of the humanist society. It goes both ways. But again, this is something that's very difficult to understand. It's not understood by most people. And you can see Lionel LeBron who is stuck within his matrix. And he's trying to get out, but he really doesn't know how to get out. This is why, you know, Lionel LeBron makes such a, such a, an excellent stu- a case to study. is because he's a person who's trying to get out of the matrix. He's trying to get outside of his sphere of influence. But he can't do it. And it, 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 it you can see the conflict, you can see how the various different events that go on really do conflict with them. And this is how you can sort of get a sense as to who Lionel is. And then that, then you take it, you, you, you place Lionel in the sense of history. Because not only can you read, read the words to God and get a sense of the character in his placement in history, but you can also then turn around And read the experiences of the author. How does the author come to the conclusions that they did? What's the history of the author? And then there you sort of you, you now begin to see how the author viewed the society around them as a person. Because it, 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 it reflects in his writings and his choice of characters. You can take that and apply it back to Lionel, or a character of a person like Lionel. Line up, line us, uh, you know, Lionel up with some of these characters. And now you've got a very good study between fiction and reality. And I think a large chunk of the authors, particularly the earlier authors, wrote from history. They wrote from personal experience within history. And so you are seeing in many cases, as you read these books, you're seeing history firsthand. You're not getting someone else's, you know, later on interpretation of what happened. You're seeing the person at the time, in the time, in the time frame, talking about this experience. <laughs>